you know, the, realistically, the only thing that stops you from getting what you want in life is yourself. And if you let these limitations beat you, then you, they're always going to beat you. If you saw the trailer last week, the Odyssey project is that essentially I'm going to run from Land's End to John O'Groats, which is the uh, southernmost point of the UK to the northernmost point of the UK. It's not like it's a common thing to do, but people have done it in the past. Um, there are, you know, people every year that do it. It's a very common thing to cycle in the UK, uh, but I wanted to run it. And in this video, I'm going to take you through why I decided to run it and my limitations leading up to that point. What made me think that for me personally, this would always be impossible and subsequently as to why I'm working so hard in order to be able to do it. Uh, I'm gonna take you back to a few years ago um, when I first, like arguably the thing that first started me to start streaming, but was also like a huge part into developing this kind of complex over being incapable of doing physical activity again that led me to becoming somebody that I didn't wanna be and, you know, drink problems and limps and all this other stuff. So I'm going to take you through that story and hopefully it resonates with a couple of you. I used to love riding BMX. I rode BMX day in, day out. It was my life from a very young age up until I was about 19, 20. But just before I turned 19, uh, left on a Wednesday night, went straight up to the skate park. I threw my keys on the bench. I was like, yeah, I feel good. I get on, I'm, I'm pedaling, and I'm like, yeah, I'm ready. Like, I go over a handful of ramps. I come round, and I do... It's called a tire slide, which, if you don't know, and I can't find a clip, you have, like, ramp here, and you kind of come up the ramp on your bike, and then you, like, air around the top, so you come out the top, but you never go, like, over. And as you come out, you, like, kick your back wheel, so your back wheel slides across the top of the ramp, and then you come back in. It's about... It was as easy as me, like, walking down a flight of stairs, you know what I mean? As I've done it, my back wheel's there. My hand came off, and I'm, I'm bearing in mind I'm like this, probably, probably about six feet up on this ramp. Um, my hand came off. I remember looking at my hand and everything feeling really slow motion, and I'm like, I'm going to land on my face, and it's going to really fucking hurt. Because the angle that I was at, like, I should have just gone like that. And I kind of, I just shut my eyes and accepted that this was about to hurt like a bitch. Like, collided with the floor, pushed my bike off me, and rolled over. And I rolled over, and, like, put my foot on the ground, and as I put my foot on the ground, it kind of went, and my foot went like a whole 180 degrees in the other direction. And I was like, that's fucked. I was like, that's not good. And in the x-ray, they tell me that I've broken my ankle and my knee, take me into like this ward. And the doctor comes out with the x-rays. He was like, you've broken your tibia and fibia. I'm like, aren't they both the bones in my leg? And he was like, yes. My other Donnie told me I broke my ankle and knee. And he was like, no, no, you've broken both of these. Uh, he was like, I'm not quite sure how you've done it because you've like spiral fractured it uh, at the bottom and at the top. And I was like, wait, so I've broken it in two places. He goes, yeah, so you've broken like the tibia at the bottom and the fibula at the top. What does that mean? And he goes, well, we're going to have to operate. Like you can't fix that with a cast because uh, this break is quite rare. Like you generally see this in like really bad car crashes where like legs get like wrenched in between vehicles and like parts of vehicles and stuff he goes i don't know how you've managed to do that because normally if you break both you break them both alongside each other and he was like it's fine like you know like it's a regular procedure or regularish procedure i was like okay um he was like but we are gonna have to keep you overnight i'm like fine and then every day for about 10 days they told me they was going to operate and i had this awful like back cast on that went from the top of my toes all the way down up the back of my leg up to my bum cheek um, and then bandage him around the front. And it was basically just hold it all into place. I'd, it kind of done the job, um, but it meant I had all of that and then like a big like um, emergency boot on, like the big like yellow boots that you see. Um, but basically what they did was they took a big plate and they bolted it all the way up my tibia uh, from my ankle to like more or less like three quarters of the way up. Um, and then just put a bandage around it and sent me on my way more or less like i went home after that but when they were kind of discharging me like the doctor said to me he was like listen he's like i know obviously you've done this like riding bmx and stuff and he goes what i will say is he goes you have to be very careful now he goes this is the x-ray like this is what it looks like and i'm like oh fuck that looks scary and he goes there's a lot of metal work in your leg and he goes if you break 
any part of your leg below your knee again like chances are we can't save that and like it will be impossible to fix that metal work he goes it's titanium plate so you'll have a job bending it or like you know breaking through that he goes if for whatever reason you somehow manage to do it like we won't be able to save that we will just have to like cut your leg off like cut that part of your leg and i'm like right at the time i was 18 that's a fucking scary thing to hear when you're 18 he was like it's gonna take you about 12 weeks to be able to walk unaided again uh, and then you'll be able to like, you know, start going back to work for light duties and stuff. Uh, but you'll never be able to run and all of this. And I was like, fuck, like my life is over. Like at the time I, I was um, pretty far through my application for the Marines. Um, and I was like, that's obviously going to get put on hold. Uh, and obviously as soon as I told them what had happened, they was like, yeah, like we're not going to let you in after that. Like, and so like on top of all of this pain and agony and heartbreak of like actually injuring myself i then had the whole thing of like what i'd worked my entire life towards doing like go up in flames and i can couldn't do what i had always wanted to do now so that was like a whole nother kick in the bollocks and after about five weeks i managed to take a handful of steps and it was like it was like euphoria like you know it was the best feeling that i could ever imagine like not being stuck in my bed i went back to work after 12 weeks and i kind of went straight back into what i was doing anyway which was like very laborious like heavy on your feet all day labor work i walked with a limp um and i kind of had almost just accepted that I was always going to have a bit of a limp but i was just i was just so absolutely terrified of injuring myself again like i've hurt myself hundreds of times i've been in hospital so many times because of injuries from riding but this was the one that like really clicked with me and was really like, fuck, you need to take it more careful now. This whole like situation just paralyzed me and it, it, it absolutely freaked me out. And I was kind of lost for a while, not knowing what to do. Like I was like, I'm going to now just stay full time at this job that I fucking hate. And like, what can I do? I didn't have a hobby. I started streaming with, you know, some of my pals just because I was bored and I had needed something to do after work. And then like COVID hit and I was on furlough and things like that. And that was when like drinking really kicked in like uh, you know I, I was partial to having a few beers anyway like, every friday i'd go out i'd get like a case of beers and i'd enjoy my friday night on my own and that was like my life up to that point and then covid hit and then all of a sudden i was just drinking every day and i know this was obviously the case for a lot of people my granddad got covid and unfortunately passed and that man meant everything to me like he lived to me like we, we lived with me we was like his full-time carers and you know, that, that man was just a huge inspiration, a big, very big, big part of my life. And like anyone that's followed me for a long time would have heard me talk a lot about him. Uh, and it hit me very hard because it was like at the same time that all of like my business and like life and, you know, like Halford Sucks as a brand was all blowing up. And I was losing like the man that meant absolutely everything to me, which was shit. Obviously, from there, like, the drinking got significantly worse. Like, I was stuck indoors all day, just drinking and streaming. I was streaming, like, 12 hours a day and just necking back pint after pint. Obviously, end of... What year are we now? 2024. End of, like, 2021. I was really overweight, drinking all the time, um, not in a good way. Like, you know, I was I just... Well, I wasn't, like, who I wanted to be. I wasn't... I wasn't wasn't me really um when i hit uh 100k followers on facebook went up the shard he had a good time to start with uh but i just got so drunk that i didn't like remember any of it um i spent a lot of money uh next morning obviously you know in classic fashion i'd upset everybody and no one wanted to talk to me the essence of the night was good and i enjoyed like the the bulk of the night but i didn't remember like a lot of it it was like is it really at this point now and obviously you know drink is a is a bit of a gateway substance and it leads to other things and you know the more we was drinking and going out and partying and stuff the more the other things were starting to get involved i kind of just i made i made a conscious decision that morning that i wanted to like not drink anymore and it was brutal it was probably uh one of the like most challenging things i've had to do in terms of like a mental battle uh obviously i work from home i work in my own little bubble in my own office uh, but at the time it was just me i'd come out here when i woke up in the morning and i'd stay out here until i decided i was done for the day and a lot of the time that was you know 18 20 hour days just on my own sat in this office 
And that, that became really difficult because this was where I would drink. After about a month of being sober, I really struggled leading up to Christmas because this was sort of at the start of November uh, 2021. Um, really sort of struggled the first month, obviously Christmas parties and things like that. And I just had to say no to all of that. Couldn't really go out and socialize because I didn't trust myself around the alcohol. But I fell in love with like making this video series. Like it was really fun. It was in weird places and we'd go around to different places. I had a laptop and you know, it would like internet dongle. Play Warzone in like weird gaffes. The last one that I actually ever ended up making of that series was the one that kind of really, really pushed me to sort my life out on that front. It was, it was, I wanted to do it on a treadmill. So I went to a friend of mine's gym, uh, set my laptop up and blah, 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 and played Warzone while I was on a treadmill. And it was, it was like a really stupid concept. It was quite fun. Like it was, it was surprisingly more difficult to play on a treadmill than you'd expect. Like I'd done it and after a few games, I got a win and I was really pleased with myself. Like I was like, this is sick. I was like, I think this is a really cool video. Um, and I, as I was walking out of his office, I said to him, I was like, brother, he goes, what? I went, do you reckon I could do, do that, but do a marathon? I like, mind at the time, I was sober for about a month and I'd lost like a little bit of weight just from cutting out the booze, but I was still 18 and a half stone uh, or 120 kilos. You know, I was, I was, I was pretty, pretty chunky. There wasn't like an ounce of muscle on me. Um, obviously after a few years of, you know, streaming full time and so on and so forth, I didn't really exercise a lot. He looked at me and he goes, Charlie, I'm like, what? He goes, no chance. I was like, all right, cool. I'm going to do it. I was like, will you let me borrow your treadmill? He was like, fuck's sake. Of course I will. So I rang Pud up and this was before Pud worked with me. I rang him up. It's like maybe half 11 at night. He goes, what the fuck do you want? I'm going to run a marathon while I play Warzone. Do you reckon I can do it? And he goes... No, he goes, is that why you've rang me up? And that night I just couldn't sleep. I was like, I've got to do it. I started building up all these plans, built up this whole like idea uh, and concept behind a, like a stream. I was like, I'll live stream it all, blah, blah, blah. Came up with the whole thing. And I was like, right, how long does it take to train for a marathon? <laughs> it's like, I haven't run in years. Looked up like a, a Nike training program. It's like a 16 week training program. I was like, all right, four months. I was like, That's Easy enough. I, I set the date at the 25th of April and got a gym membership and started training. And basically, I just went to the gym every night after stream and ran on a treadmill for like an hour. And it was fucking boring. And I hated every second of it. And But the weight dropped off me. By the time the marathon came round, uh, four months later, I weighed uh, 15 and a half stone. So I'd lost three stone. Uh, I, and in that time, like I hadn't really done much with my diet. Like I'd sorted it out a little bit and was eating a little bit healthier. Uh, but mostly just because I'd changed my lifestyle entirely and was actually like exercising and stuff. The marathon was an absolute insane success. Like I'd wrote up a whole video schedule for the entire thing because I didn't think, I, I thought it would take me ages. It took me like five hours, um, which obviously isn't a good time. But, you know, I had to entertain and stream and stuff like that. We raised 12 and a half grand and so on and so forth. And that level of success from that event was so euphoric and addictive i couldn't not try and up it i sat there every day for a couple of weeks trying to think about what to do next and i was like i want uh, maybe like climb everest on a stepper while while playing cod and blah 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 and then like something just clicked and i was like what about as like an IRL video series? And this was this was now how it all really begun. I was like, as an IRL video series, I walk from one end of the country to the other and I live homeless and I like raise money for like homeless charities or something. Like the, the whole thing was essentially like I would be living homeless and trying to vlog it um, and like showcasing what it's like to be moving around and that sort of thing. And then I was like, I realistically never am going to actually know what it's like. I also... If I'm moving that far, like I, I'm gonna have to ensure that I'm eating properly. Because you know, I, was, I wanted to still be walking like 25, 30 miles a day. And that's still a decent strain on your body. Um, and I was like, if I can't eat, then I'm gonna struggle to recover. And I was like, fuck, I was like, this idea might not be as good as I thought it was. <laughs> kind of put it on the back burner. I had all of the planning that I'd done written down on that. It was quite cool to see it now that we're actually doing it. It was quite cool to see like my ideas from a year, like over a year ago. Uh, but like I, I kind of settled on the idea that I wanted to run it. Uh, and this was maybe like end of 2022 at this point. So I spent a little while like being quite depressed having finished something 
like really big and not knowing what to do with myself you know the gym kept me like straight after the marathon and stuff like stopping me from going back fucking on a bender every night but yeah like start of last year i i, I originally planned this and was like i want to do it in the spring so on and so forth weather will be nice like it'll be good and then i realized like quite how much this project was going to cost and i actually have no idea really what i'm doing i was like because a lot of the idea behind this whole thing is like you know like at that point i decided i wanted to run it and i was like i can run this i was like, you know like I, if i train i'll be fine but i didn't think about <clears throat> a lot of the finer details <laughs> of the course you know i'm not a cartographer i'm not a route planner i'm not an experienced expeditionist or anything like that uh the only time i've ever done any sort of routes is following signs uh or a sat nav i was like i don't really think that's going to be the case with this i'm going to need somebody to plan a route for me and then i'm going to need you know like we're going to need like a camper van we're going to need all of this it was kind of like a big oversight and last year i kind of said in my head that it was probably going to cost me about 20 grand to fund it all and i'm still this year trying to keep it below 20 grand we are going to have to get like certain levels of equipment and certain other things and then obviously worry about like how we're going to travel like we need a caravan but this is like what this whole series leading up to it is going to be about that we i've kind of got like three video series in mind over the next few months that is essentially going to be like a docu series which is going to be like this i sit down and talk and i get like some nice b-roll we have like you know i showcase the meetings i showcase us when we're like looking at things talk about like training pro like programs properly um and like the science behind what i'm doing like we're looking at nutrition everything like that which will be cool i'm gonna try and like i'm not gonna make it like too in-depth and sciencey because the whole point of what i want this series to be able to be is like anybody can technically go out and push themselves and i'm obviously doing it to like a big extent and you know in order to not fucking kill myself off like i'm doing it properly you know i've got coaches and things like that but if i'd done it last year i wouldn't have done any of that i would have just gone out and done it like um this year i'm in a bit more fortunate to be able to do that and things like that and obviously i'm um, i take my training and stuff a lot more seriously now anyway so i don't want to jeopardize any of the other areas of my training but i i will keep it like those parts like relatively simple um so that anyone can kind of follow it especially when it comes to the training because i, I don't want people to be put off like this is obviously like a very high level task but you don't need all of the shit that you're necessarily going to see just to go out and run a 5k or train for a marathon or like whatever do you know what i mean and so i will you know i'm gonna really want to make sure that people understand that so that so the docu series is going to be that kind of thing um i've got like a bunch of videos planned and if there are any any aspects of this that you want to see please tell us like I, I will happily go out of my way to make extra videos on the series like i want it to be massive the other series is gonna be more like uh a raw uncut like you're gonna see how i'm feeling every day's type thing like so whenever i've been training over the last like i've only started it this week but whenever i've been training i've coming back and i sit down i'll tell you why i did what i did that day how i trained you know occasionally i'll get some clips of like um the sessions that day or whatever but like i'm doing it fresh i'm doing it fresh out the gym so i'm not sitting there looking back at my runs at the end of the week and i'm like yeah i did this run like I want you to see like how I'm feeling after that experience. I want it to be raw. Like I want you to see every aspect of what we're going through for this. But I really want to showcase the highs and lows and talk about my motivations and how I keep pushing through that. Because believe you me, there are days when it's pissing out of rain, it's freezing cold that I do not want to go out and run. I still go out and run. Do you know what I mean? And that's going to be one of the things that we talk about. And hopefully I can use as an opportunity to encourage more people to go out and push themselves regardless of their, their you know situation or the weather or whatever um you know it's, it is a very much mind over matter thing um and the third series is going to be more like a, a small kind of tiktok instagram reel um facebook short youtube short like series where basically just each day um uh, i'm gonna like film my training um obviously i spend a lot of time in the gym as well as running so i'm not gonna just film my feet for an hour but uh, you know, and just do like a like a building an athlete series. Um, you know, we'll talk about like the decisions and stuff. And I think it'd be really cool. 
if there are videos that you want to see, like obviously let us know. Like you know, down to down to one hundred percent do it. And if you've like made it this far for all of that, thank you by the way. Uh, <laughs> you might be wondering what the point in all of me telling you all of that was in regards to the series. And as as I say, like I want the series to be about personal limitations and overcoming that and obviously uh, you know a few years ago i was told i would never be able to run and do all of this and i walked with a limp for years because i let that paralyze me and i let that beat me it took me a long time to realize that actually if i let it paralyze me and beat me then it will and it did you know and uh, after recognizing what my personal limitations were it made me realize that i want to push them and now obviously I don't take my life for granted. I, you know, I, I have a cushy life. I, I do. I, I, I'm, I'm healthy. I'm, I'm happy. And there are people that are a lot worse off than me. And that became very apparent when I was when I was training for the marathon, and I met all of the guys from Blessma or a load of guys from Blessma, and I met some of the most inspirational people that I'd ever met. Like you know, war veterans with one leg, no legs, one arm, no arms. Like and and they just got on with it. They you know like they they're incredible incredible people and it put into perspective that actually what i had been through was nothing compared to what they had been through and you know uh, and i'm sure they would probably disagree and they you know they, they'd be the first to say that limitation is is perspective right and that's what i want to try and convey to people is that my limitation is going to be very different to their limitation and you know but it's also going to be very different to yours watching this you know you might actually be like a perfectly normal person and have had no injuries and nothing's stopping you except from your own mental battles and that's fine but don't let that you know beat you forever because there are people that are worse off than you there are people that are better off than you and you know the, realistically the only thing that stops you from getting what you want in life is yourself and if you let these limitations beat you, then you, they're always going to beat you. And I think that's what I'm trying to convey with all of this. And this story is important to me and important to this challenge because it's what made this challenge feel like something that I never thought I would be able to do. And yet here I am and I'm going and I'm doing it and I'm going to run 30 to 45 miles a day. And I'm going to, you know, I never thought I'd even run a marathon, let alone something like 35 of them do you know what i mean like it's 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 an insane aspect of that to me but it it's for me to prove to myself that i'm only as limited as i let myself be and for anybody watching this that feels limited the only thing that's limiting you is you and you can come up with xyz problems and things like that and you know like no one's asking you to go out and run a marathon or do whatever but you can i can guarantee you can make your life better and no one else can do that for you and you've just got to figure out your limitations and figure out what what it is that's making you unhappy and what it is that you want to achieve and what it is that you think is stopping you from doing that and just go out and fucking do it man because who else is going to do it for you and i and i live by that you know who else is going to do it so ho hopefully it's it's rung true with a couple of you and a couple of you you know go out and push yourself today or tomorrow and and try something new and do that thing that maybe you've always wanted to do but have been too scared to do